Hello, welcome to our service today. We enter yet another week of peace and quiet in this lockdown. Many of us are finding more time for the things that really matter. I hope you are finding some blessings at this time, even if the cloud of fear and uncertainty continues to hang over us. This is far from our normal practice of worship, but I hope you find value in setting aside this time for prayer and for reflection. We are drawing more and more of our folk into participating, as you'll see. There are lots of new film stars in the making, so thank you for joining us. We're now two weeks beyond Easter, still basking in the light of the resurrection. I hope that in this act of worship, we might experience that light afresh. Rather than provide you with a service sheet this morning, you will see our prayers and responses on the screen. I hope this is helpful. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. We sing with confidence of him who is our Lord, him who is our sustainer, him who is our guarantor of hope. All my hope on God is founded. Please pause this video and click on the link for that first song. Our gospel story today is one of the key accounts of the resurrection. Two travellers meet Jesus on the road to Emmaus. It is a very hopeful story, yet not without its confusion and fear. I think it speaks well to our times. These two disciples were coming away from Jerusalem utterly bewildered by what they had witnessed. We too are bewildered at this time. So rather than beginning with a confession, I offer you a lament for the times we're facing. We lift up our eyes to you, Lord God, the one who sits enthroned in heaven. Hear our cry, almighty God. Listen to our prayer. On all who have contracted the virus, Lord, have mercy. On all who have lost loved ones to this sickness and are in mourning, Lord, have mercy. On all who live with the threat of unemployment, Lord, have mercy. We cry out for healing and sustenance. We cry out for comfort and peace. On all medical professionals and carers attending to those infected, Christ, have mercy. On all scientists striving to find a vaccine and to make it available, Christ have mercy. On all leaders of government as they make decisions to try and contain the virus, Christ have mercy. We pray for strength in the long and exhausting hours of labour. We pray for wisdom in the research and difficult decisions. On all who have not yet contracted the virus, Lord, have mercy. On the most vulnerable of our society who are lost and lonely, Lord, have mercy. On all disciples of Jesus Christ seeking to serve others within this crisis, Lord, have mercy. We plead for protection of health. We plead for all to remain calm and kind. Almighty God, you are our rock, our refuge, our hiding place. You calm our frantic thoughts and fill our despairing hearts with joy and strength. You are our light as we walk in this darkness. Nothing can separate us from the Father's unfailing love and kindness, not even sickness or the fear of tomorrow. You are the God who sees us and sustains us. Amen. A lament is not often part of our liturgy. In normal times, we are a mix of joys and sorrows, of regrets and a sense of achievement. But we are now united in our common struggle. So a lament seems particularly appropriate for times such as these. 
As I said, our gospel is going to guide us through these troubling times to our source of hope. Rob is going to kick off with the first part of the story. A reading today is taken from Luke 24, verses 13 to 21a. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. He said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And now our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Rob. These two followers of Jesus were confused and anxious for good reason. I hope that none of us has witnessed a public execution I've no doubt I would be traumatised if I did, especially if it was someone I knew and respected. The narrative of the Gospel does not delve too far into the feelings of these two people. They had seen their Messiah succumb to a slow and agonising death with the cruelest of execution techniques. When the text says that they look sad, we're not getting quite the level of trauma that they were suffering. They must have been exhausted with shock. It was all they could do to simply trudge back to their home. They were on the road to nowhere and they were utterly confused. They concluded the sorry tale to the stranger with the crux of their disappointment. They said, but we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Jesus was not simply their revered teacher and master. He was also the one in whom their hopes for the future lay. They were, after all, living in an occupied land. The Romans had them under their unyielding thumb. These two followers had seen in Jesus a leader who could overthrow the Romans and return the land to its people. They sensed that freedom was within their grasp. And now it was all over, their hope extinguished. What we're going through at the moment is fearful, though not as immediately shocking as an execution. But with all the uncertainties ahead, I suspect we share a similar loss of hope about the future. Perhaps like me, you like to make plans. We want to grasp opportunities and be open to possibilities. Much of that seems beyond our grasp at the moment. I can mention all the plans and ideas we've been working on for our churches. What will become of them? Honestly, I just don't know. So this is where our story now meets the Gospel story. We are feeling bereft of our hopes for the future. Things we had hoped for may not happen. But of course, the story doesn't just end there. There is more. Rachel is going to continue the Gospel reading. Hi all! Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 21 to 24. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Thanks, Rachel. It's hard to put ourselves in the shoes of those two weary travellers. We know the end of their story, 
and they did not. No wonder they were struggling to believe that Jesus had risen. All they had to go on were some strange tales from their equally traumatised friends. We don't know how our story is going to end, this tale of the coronavirus pandemic. Even the scientists don't know clearly how we will emerge safely. Political leaders have never taken this sort of radical action, and they're having to make it up as they go along. Plus, we've never retreated from one another like this. None of us knows under what circumstances and time frame we might be able to get beyond this awful situation. Yet there are clear indications that we will, just not clear enough for our liking yet. Alongside the particular circumstances of the pandemic lies the eternal purpose of God. What we are going through sits against that backdrop. Do we have faith in God at this point? Do we believe that God's purpose remains as real and alive as ever? Whether we are hopeful or not, let's exercise our faith. Faith is believing without seeing. It is an act of courage when circumstances seem to be working against us. Why not join with me now in affirming God's presence amongst us? Do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. This is indeed our faith, and we are prepared to live by it. I think the following song might inspire us further. It encourages us to continue on in faith. O oh, Jesus, I have promised. Do pause again and click on the second song. Jesus was not especially gracious to our traumatised travellers when he first spoke to them. He called them fools. Oh dear. Rachel will continue our story. Hello, it's me again. Uh, here's the second part of the readings uh, taken from Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 25 to 27. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things, and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Thanks again, Rachel. When you look back into the ancient scriptures of the Old Testament, there is much that informs us of God's purpose, much that points us to Christ. If we think life is difficult now, we should remind ourselves that crises have been the normal run of things in our long history. Wars, disease, famine, you name it. God's presence and grace were discovered by ordinary people through these crises. The Psalms are our go-to source of reflection on crises. They remind us that life has never been stable for long, yet God remains constant. As it happens, the Psalm set for today reminds us exactly of this. I've asked Kath to read it. I love the Lord because he hears me. He listens to my prayers. He listens to me every time I call to him. The danger of death was all round me. The horrors of the grave closed in on me. I was filled with fear and anxiety. Then I called to the Lord. I beg you, Lord, save me. The Lord is merciful and good. Our God is compassionate. The Lord protects the helpless. When I was in danger, he saved me. Be confident, my heart, because the Lord has been good to me. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks, Kath. So Jesus outlined the prophecies to his two travelling companions. He reminded them of what they already knew. They sensed he was on to something, so they took the next step. I'll leave Love Day to finish the story. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 28 to 35. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us. The day is almost over and it is getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them and took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others and saying, The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The, the two then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognised the Lord when he broke the bread. Jesus is revealed in the breaking of bread. He convinces his two hosts that he is risen. That answered all their anxieties and questions. Not that they knew all the answers, not that they could see what would happen next. All they needed at that point was to encounter the risen Christ. There is the same opportunity for us today as for then, 2,000 years ago. Whatever we are facing at this point, we can trust that Christ's presence amongst us is enough. It changes everything and we need not worry how we might emerge. If Christ is with us, what can stand in our way? He makes all things new in this world and the next. We do not know what will happen in this running saga with the virus, but we do know Christ amongst us. I'd like to invite you to reflect on what it means for the risen Christ to inhabit your personal world and to release you from the trials of this time. I found a modern song inspired by St. Patrick's Breastplate. Pause this service, click on the third song and allow the words and music to speak to you. I hope you find that helpful, even transformative. Now we can spend some time in prayer. The response to our prayers today is, Lord Jesus Christ, come walk with us today. Lord Jesus Christ, come walk with us today. Let us pray to God the Father in Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we come to you in intercession today, mindful of your death and glorious resurrection. We can identify with your disciples who felt that the world stood still at your crucifixion. Life had changed in an instant, hopes were dashed, and no one could imagine what the future might hold. We pray for our world this day as we wait in the knowledge that many things will never be the same again. And we can trust that we can walk with you into a brighter and fairer world. Lord Jesus Christ, come walk with us today. Lord Jesus, you accompanied your faithful disciples as they walked home dejected along the Emmaus Road. And you spoke with authority of the scriptures that foretold of your life and death and resurrection, even though they hadn't understood. Help us to find answers to our present day concerns as we ponder your word for insight, comfort and hope. 
We pray for your wisdom as we search globally for new and fairer ways to live and work together. May we be open to fresh opportunities that have lain hidden until this moment in history. Lord Jesus Christ, come walk with us today. Heavenly Father, we pray for families everywhere during these unprecedented times. We give thanks for the unexpected blessings of spending quality family time in delightful spring weather and shaping future patterns of living and learning and playing together. Be present to all those families where there is separation, stress and discord and sustain all your people in their time of need. Grant wisdom to those in authority tasked with making challenging decisions that will have short-term as well as far-reaching impact on people's lives. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, and her government under the leadership of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Lord Jesus Christ, come walk with us today. Lord Jesus, you were invited to abide a while at the home of your bereaved and traumatised disciples. And it was during a shared supper of bread and wine that their eyes were opened to recognise your presence at the hour of their distress. We miss the opportunities to meet as a church family to worship together at this time. Give thanks for the emerging creative benefits of the internet and especially social media, in fostering the community spirit that many are missing. As you, Lord, were invited into your disciples' home, so we find ourselves drawn visually into the homes and personal spaces of so many different people. May we pray the blessing of your Holy Spirit upon each home we visit through this curious new window of opportunity. We pray especially for all those who are suffering the enforced isolation of their homes, the loss of personal freedom and their routine activities at this difficult time. And we ask your comfort and peace as they wait for the lockdown to be lifted. Lord Jesus Christ, come walk with us today. Lord, your disciples were so filled with awe and wonder when they recognised your risen presence in their midst that they hurried back to their friends to share the good news that they had met with you in person. Fill us too with the gospel truth of your risen life and the urgency to share that awesome blessing with all those seeking healing and strength, hope and encouragement, reconciliation and unity in these uncertain times. As we explore the possibilities for unimaginable change in creating a world of justice and peace that was the focus of your life and ministry on earth, we pray that your kingdom will come and your will be done. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And our collect for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn speaks to us as pilgrims on a stark pathway, much like those travellers to Emmaus, much like us at this time. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Pause the service and press the button for the fourth song. Well, we're drawing to a close. 
Don't forget that we offer a daily reflection online to help strengthen our faith through this time, all to keep us moving in the direction of God's hope. Let me take you back to that moment when Jesus first revealed himself to the whole group of disciples in that upstairs room. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. And also with you. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.